Hey, good morning, my coffee with Brenna friends. Grab your beverage, grab your Bible, because it's time for coffee with Brenna. Hopefully you can hear me okay. There's a fan going on in the room. I am at church. They were doing staff devotionals out in the uh, air conditioning, because that's one of the only air conditioned rooms in the church. And this fan has lots of buttons, and I don't know how to turn it off, but I did a test. It doesn't seem like it's all that loud. So today I am grateful for so many things. I'm grateful for an early morning walk with God, and I played a new playlist on my phone, and it was encouraging to me. And so now I'm going to share with you. I mentioned in passing last week, in in the video more and more strength which I will link in the show notes that I'm doing this series in my blog called breaking up with food not only am I doing a series in my blog I'm doing a series in my life called breaking up with food I am recording this on a Thursday it is day 11 of this process I think yeah because I think yesterday was day 10 and on the first day of this journey I don't know if I read this somewhere or if it's something I just randomly wrote down in my journal, but I wrote down, I don't have a food issue. I have a heart issue. So today's Coffee with Brenna is called, What's Your Real Issue? I'm sure I've mentioned this before. The author of the book, Coming Clean, which I will also link, shared in a podcast I was listening to that... Well, back, back up a little bit. He's overcoming alcoholism. He's recovering from alcoholism um, and has been in recovery for several years now. Quite a few. I want to say like seven or eight. And he read early on in the journey something in a book that said, addiction is not about the drug or the alcohol. And I extrapolate on that, or the food, or the shopping, or the escaping into Netflix, or whatever it might be. The real question isn't, why are you running to that thing? But what pain are you running from? What's going on in your heart? What's the real issue? Food, running to food for me became a habit. A bad habit, obviously but a habit nonetheless. If there were pain in my life or situations that I didn't know how to deal with, I don't deal well with unresolved situations. I am a passionate person. I have strong ideas about a lot of things. And it's hard for me to see situations that I know could be going better or could be different. And, and they're not for one reason or another whether people aren't willing to submit to God, whether they're stuck, like I have been stuck in this cycle with food. I don't want to minimize or maximize that struggle. And don't check out because I'm talking about food. This is about so much more than that. Think about What's the real issue? Something you're struggling with, something that's bothering you, a relationship that's broken, some anger that you're holding onto in your heart or bitterness toward a situation. You could say, well, the real problem is that person that I'm upset with. The real problem is if they would just change, I wouldn't be so angry or I wouldn't be so bitter. I can never forgive that person for what they did to me. Well, is that person the problem? Is what they did really the problem or is your heart the problem that you haven't really surrendered your heart to Jesus in that situation? So I'm going to read you a couple scriptures. This scripture was in the book Made to Crave. I actually read this year and I've just looked, looked it up in my blog. I read it in 2014 as well and I read it a few years before that. I forgot I read it in 2014. Definitely resonated more in 2014 than the first time I read it. But this time it really did because I could just see this cycle within myself. So the author reads this scripture from Psalm 86. Teach me your way, Lord. 
that I might, may rely on your faithfulness. Give me an undivided heart that I may fear your name. I will praise you, Lord my God, with all my heart. I will glorify your name forever. Ever since I started thinking about this a whole week and a half ago, <laughs> I'm sure this is not a new concept. It just clicked for me. Sometimes we need to hear something like 10 times before it actually clicks. Since it, since it clicked that this is a heart issue, I've been seeing <clears throat> heart scriptures all throughout my Bible reading. Now that was from the NIV, but these next two are from the Living Bible. Ephesians 3.17, I pray that Christ will be more and more at home in your hearts, living within you as you trust in him. May your roots go down deep into the soil of God's marvelous love. And then in Ezekiel 36, verse 26 and 27, this is a well-known verse, and the, the first verse is a well-known verse, and then I went straight into the second verse. I will give you a new heart. I will give you new and right desires and put a new spirit within you. I will take out your stony hearts of sin and give you new hearts of love, and I will put my spirit within you so that you will obey my laws and do whatever I command. The... You know, the Bible I'm reading right now. Actually, I just finished Jude this morning, so now I'm going to go back and read Romans and 1st and 2nd Corinthians, because as I mentioned, for some reason I started in Galatians. I think I was focusing on the prison epistles, the prison letters. Um, but then I just ended up reading through all the letters, and now I want to go back and read the three that I missed, which are long, so that will take me a little more time. Some of the letters I've just sat down and read in one sitting. This translation, my friend translation I'm enjoying a lot right now uses the word heart a lot more I feel like than other translations though it may just be that I am more aware right now so the question today for you we won't make this too long today is what is the real issue whatever battle you're facing today what is the real issue and is it a heart issue what is going on in your heart because the issue may be the situation, like I've already said. The issue may appear to be the situation. But we will be faced with challenging situations every day. And the core of it is how do we react to those situations? What's going on in our hearts? How are we responding in our hearts? And if it's, you know, and I wouldn't call myself a food, a true food addict. The reality is I eat healthy and choose well a lot of the time. But those times when I don't, cut it off and fling it away. I'm ready to, ready to get rid of that sin that so easily entangles. And, and like I talked about last week, God is giving me more and more strength to do that. Good choices beget good choices, if you know what I mean. Um... And bad choices, unfortunately, beget bad choices, meaning my good choices are building on top of each other, but my bad choices can do the same thing, you know? So if I think I have a food issue, I think I spend too much time on social media or watching Netflix too much or whatever the case may be, again, doesn't have to be like an addiction or an issue that you really feel is life controlling because we can escape what what we can escape into social media we can escape into tv shows we can escape into avoiding conflict we can escape into a lot of things what's the real issue and what's going on in my heart that is what i'm asking you to think about and pray about this week and i have to say like i just said a few minutes ago as soon as i started thinking about it stuff started popping up and i encourage you to write something down it's not that coffee with Brenna is the end all be all, but if you write, if you use a journal, like I've talked about using the, the help that can be in using a journal quite a bit, I've talked to you guys about that. The reason I like to write it down is because I went back and looked at my journal and I saw, oh yeah, 713, I don't have a food issue, I have a heart issue. And then all of this stuff started, started popping up um, that related to that. 
because I had noted it and I don't know if I would have made those connections otherwise. So write down these two questions in your journal if you're able to do that. What's the real issue and what's going on in my heart? And I trust with you that as you go about your week, God will, will reveal that truth to you. He might not answer you as soon as you pray. Sometimes he speaks to me that way, but he more often speaks to me, oh, that conversation I had with a friend, oh, or that passage I read in scripture, that relates back to what I've been thinking about. All right, let's pray. Lord Jesus, I am so grateful for your presence in my life, Lord God. You gave up your life. <laughs> You gave up all your rights, you laid them down, you came down here to this earth as a man, lived a sinless life, died on a cross, and that wasn't the end. You were resurrected so that we may have that resurrection life, so that we may know the power of Christ in your resurrection, as it says in Philippians. Um, Lord, my prayer for myself and my Coffee with Brenna friends today is that we would have an undivided heart, that as we choose you, as we dive deep into some of these things, we would receive that heart of flesh instead of that heart of stone, that new heart with new and right desires, that Christ would be more and more at home in our hearts, living within us as we trust in you. That's why one of my daily choices on my, my, um, my daily routines on my breaking up with food routine is to choose to trust. Help us to choose to trust in you and Holy Spirit who guides us into all truth, guide us into the truth about what the real issue is, what's the core issue and what's going on in our hearts. And we pray all this in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, friends. Till next time.